It's early afternoon on November 2nd, 2023. Something is taking place in the middle of the Gobi Desert in Inner Mongolia on a patchy piece of concrete surrounded by hangars and sometimes known as Launchpad 120. A single stage rocket sits on a pad, fueled and ready. From a distance, observers can make out grid fins and landing legs, and a logo underneath the Chinese flag reads Hyperbola 2Y. This is iSpace, a Chinese commercial launch company founded in 2016, taking a crack at vertical takeoff, vertical landing, or in other words, how SpaceX achieves reusability. At 2 p.m. local time, the single methylox-fueled engine of the Hyperbola 2Y ignites, producing 15 tons of thrust and lifting the test rocket up to 178 meters. After hovering for a few moments, the rocket stage performs a controlled vertical descent, landing on the same launch pad less than 2 meters away from the initial liftoff point and with a speed of 0.1 kilometers per hour. Now, what you just saw is China's most recent and by far their closest milestone to achieving rocket reusability, a la SpaceX. It's remarkable because while other Chinese commercial companies have also been going in this direction, the furthest they've reached so far is performing low altitude hops with miniature single stage prototypes using very low thrust engines, which aren't engines for orbital rockets, and in some cases, even just using jet engines. On the other hand, iSpace's Hyperbola 2Y is essentially the first stage of an actual future rocket, the Hyperbola 2. The Hyperbola 2 is a reusable two-stage liquid-fueled medium-lift launch vehicle, which uses nine of iSpace's in-house developed Methlox engines, the Jiaodian 1. The company has been very serious about reusability. We've seen over the years the design and testing of grid fins, of landing legs, and the Jiaodian 1 engines were designed to be very significantly throttled and restartable, which is really what you're looking for to recover rockets. The next goal for iSpace will be to perform a 1 km and 10 km altitude hop, and theoretically it could have been able to perform the maiden launch of the Hyperbola 2 in 2024-ish, which would have crowned it as the first non-SpaceX reusable orbital rockets around the world. However, iSpace recently suggested that the Hyperbola 2Y would be used only as a technology verification tool to learn how to recover rockets, but that the actual Hyperbola 2 rocket was going to be cancelled. Instead, iSpace would start developing a much larger rocket, the Hyperbola 3. Now, why do this? Why would iSpace move away from potentially flying a reusable rocket as early as in the next 12 to 18 months? Well, the Hyperbola 2 would have been in a tough spot. With a payload capacity of roughly two tons to low Earth orbit, it would have been in competition with Chinese commercial solid field rockets, which are already in service, like the Jelong 3, the Kuaizhou 11, and the Kinetica 1, and to some extent, the smaller solid field rockets, which cater to the market of so called fast response dedicated small sat missions. But at the same time, the Hyperbola 2 is competing or would have been competing against other liquid field rockets from competitors like Space Pioneer, Land Space, and Galactic Energy for the deployment of large-scale constellations into low Earth orbits. And here again, the Hyperbola 2 is at a disadvantage. And let me explain. The most sought-after program by Chinese launch companies is likely the deployment of the Guowang Mega Constellation, basically China's equivalent to Starlink. Today we know that Chinese commercial launch companies will get to launch at least some of these 12,000 satellites composing the constellation. This was hinted at by former chief engineer of the Long March rockets, Long Le Hao, in early 2023. You also have many Chinese commercial launch companies which have explicitly marketed their liquid fuel launch vehicle as a means to deploy large satellite internet constellations. And more recently, Orion Space's co-CEO Bu Xiangwei even slipped that the government had been requesting that commercial companies have a rocket ready by 2025 with, quote unquote, a significant payload capacity to orbit. Now, a significant payload capacity to orbit by 2025. Let's dwell on this expression for a moment. Who can achieve this among Chinese companies? Well, basically not the Hyperbola 2, which is limited to two tons to orbit, because it would otherwise mean launching satellite internet satellites by groups of three or four, which would mean thousands of launches for a mega constellation like Starlink or Guowang. On the other hand, iSpace's competitors, Space Pioneer, Galactic Energy, Land Space, and Orion Space 
all have rockets in a higher payload range and rolling out either in 2024 or 2025. So iSpace now wants to jump directly to the development of a much more powerful rocket, the Hyperbola 3, in order to capture what will probably be a major source of revenue for these commercial launch companies. Now, this won't be a smooth sail because despite iSpace's major achievement here with the Hyperbola 2i vertical landing this month, Developing a new heavy lift rocket costs a lot of money and a lot of time. And while iSpace is already quite advanced on their next generation engine, the heavier thrust Jiaodian 2, there's still a long way to go in a short time frame. Their last round of funding was in August 2020. That's nearly three and a half years ago. So they'll probably need to raise more money. And unlike their competitors like Landspace, Space Pioneer and Galactic Energy, iSpace doesn't really have a reliable smaller lift rocket which can bring in cash in the meantime. They do have the Hyperbola 1, a smaller lift rocket, but that has had a questionable track record with multiple failures and each time due to different reasons. So in a nutshell, we're likely going to see further advances in Chinese reusable rocket tech in the next 12 to 18 months and maybe even the first orbital launch iSpace, as we saw, is leading the way with this technology, but in my opinion, the race isn't that much about reusability, but more about which company can have a sufficiently capable medium lift launch vehicle and early enough to capture the upcoming Constellation deployment launch demand. China has moved from over a dozen commercial companies in the late 2010s with PowerPoint rockets it's a handful of very serious projects in 2023, and it'll be really interesting to see in the next two years which companies thrive, which companies just survive, and which companies end up just pivoting entirely away from this industry. And finally, as always, I just want to say a special thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon.com and YouTube memberships. Your support has really been essential in making this episode possible and keeping this show going. If you found this episode interesting, please consider supporting us and joining our community of like-minded space enthusiasts on our Discord server. Thank you very much for watching.